a biology students. It's time to learn about hominids and all those cool things we looked at before the break and again a little bit yesterday, right? You're going to want to take handwritten notes on this because you'll have a quick quiz tomorrow using your handwritten notes. So for each one, I'll tell you the important things that you need to write down and then some interesting facts. You're going to want to record the name of each hominid and then a couple of things about it for your quick quiz tomorrow and you can use your notes on that all right let's giddy up hopefully you have put your guesses down as to what you think uh the skulls are because i'm going to reveal those to you here in just a minute so first off we want to talk a little bit of an overview um, so don't write this down. This is just an overview of the oldest skulls and skeletons that have been found. So these are more ape-like skulls and skeletons. We call hominids things that resemble humans or human-like. And so these are the oldest ones, meaning that they were around, could be millions of years ago. And I'll give you some dates. And those are, you know, just estimates of what we think so far based on where we found the skeletons and skulls and some of the radiometric dating we've been able to do on that. We'll talk more about that next week. So Lucy is one of the most complete hominid ske skeletons that's ever been found. And what's interesting about this particular skeleton is that they were able to tell that it was a female. Why? Because the pelvis on a female skeleton, um, if it's a human, is going to be wider than a man's. So the pelvis right here is more open and wide instead of more up and down like a male pelvis would be. So they think that Lucy was an Australopithecus afarensis, that's her fancy name. Um, she, we think she was about four feet tall, three and a half, four feet tall, female, and kind of ape-like. Now this is art, obviously an artist's rendition. They can't tell that by the skeleton, what the skin or anything on the skin looked like, but kind of interesting to know. So why did they call her Lucy? Well, when her skeleton was found, this song, Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds by the Beatles was really popular and that's how she got her name. So there you go. When we talk about the Homo erectus, Homo sapiens, Homo habilis, that is the genus name of the more modern type of hominids. So we're looking at less ape-like features, although wow, artist rendition is pretty ape-like, right? And a larger brain case for the most part, and more modern features, more modern skull shape. We'll talk more about that in a little bit. The Neanderthal is interesting because Take a look at the skeleton right here at the bottom. This is a modern human skeleton. This is a Neanderthal skeleton. And what do you notice right away? This one's a lot bigger, right? A lot heavier too. So we think that the skeletons uh, were heavier because they had more muscle. They were larger organisms, larger hominids. So here's the first one you're going to want to write down is the Neanderthal. We're going to talk a little bit about this one and also we're going to take a look at the skull of the neanderthal this big one here letter h that was our neanderthal skull so just look at his skull next to mine oh my gosh right big huge brain case they were about seven feet tall and they're fairly modern meaning that they lived about fifty thousand years ago which is i guess modern when I mean, you're looking at the and scheme of Earth's history. Um, like I said, they were really tall. They were probably very intelligent and very strong. And the reason why we know that is because their skeleton is really thick. The bones are thick, which means they probably were built up to withstand and hold and move large muscles. So write that down for Neanderthal. Stop, pause, go back, take notes if you need to. So Neanderthal, about 50,000 years ago, smart, bigger heads, thick uh, skeletons probably were very strong. Next one we've got Cro-Magnon man. This is the cave dweller. When we talk about caveman, uh, this is what we're talking about here. And because we found these cave drawings in caves, and we could date them back quite a long time ago, um, we know that they were not made by modern humans, which is kind of cool. So if you look at the skeleton or particularly the skull shape of this one, um, a little bit like modern human right here, just kind of like Neanderthal man also. 
um, but also uh, a little bit non-human too, almost kind of like an old man. So things to remember about the Cro-Magnon is that it lived about 40,000 years ago, a little bit more recent even than the Neanderthal. Um, and then they used tools. How do we know that? Because they found tools along with some of the skeletal remains. They also made jewelry and did our cave paintings. So there you go, Cro-Magnon name. Next, we've got Homo sapiens. So that's us. We're actually Homo sapiens sapiens because these organisms, these hominids, PG-13, um, these hominids are a little bit, uh, the brain case is a little bit smaller and the forehead is more sloped. You saw that in the lab that you did where you compared the foreheads of the skulls and this one is more, definitely more sloped than it is vertical. Vertical, right? So the skull for that one, you probably guessed this, is letter C. This is modern man right here skull C. You can see these cheekbones right here. This is why we have cheekbones. This zygomatic arch right here, this hole, makes that nice little cheekbone underneath of our skin. Mandible, maxilla, this is modern human right here, and the forehead is vertical. Just Excellent. Homo sapiens, modern man. All right, next we've got same genus Homo, but now we've got Floriensis. So write this information down about Homo Floriensis. The, this was known as the Hobbit, and we say that because here's modern man's skull right here. Here's the skull of Homo Floriensis, little tiny guy, right? And we don't know for sure that this is what it looked like. It's an artist's rendition, and how do they know that? Based on the bone structure, they can put muscle and skin on top of that and come up with this. So a little bit more prominent cheekbones. You see how that zygomatic arch sticks out a little bit further than ours? So that's what gives you the more prominent cheekbones right there. Homo floriensis. So um, they're known as the Hobbit, lived about 17,000 to 95,000 years ago. You don't need to memorize those dates, but if you want to write those down as a fact, you certainly may about three feet tall, right? So that is a fairly short person. So this hominid was known as the hobbit. Small brain um, and probably um, very kind of, we would call them slow mentally because of their small brain case. If you look, oh my gosh, look at that huge big brain case for our big brains. Homo floriensis didn't have that. Next we've got the Neanderthals. We've already talked about them and how their skulls were bigger and thicker than modern humans. So let's move on to Homo heidelbergensis. So a lot of these ones, as they get older, we haven't found a complete skull. Most of the skulls and skeletons we've found have been broken up in pieces like this, and then over many, many months probably it took for scientists to piece these pieces back together to form an actual skull. So they had to know the structure, the anatomy, of that hominid in order to know where the pieces of bone went. So what should you know about Homo heidelbergensis? Uh, let's see. How about that they lived between 200,000 and 700,000 years ago? They had a large brow ridge. So that was one of the things that you looked at in your lab, right? Right there, you see the big brow ridge that made the big brow. And we call that the caveman look. Okay. They were um, the first humans to hunt. And how do we know that? Because we found hunting tools with their remains. Do we know they were absolutely the first? No, they're just the first re human-like remains, the hominid remains that we found with tools that probably were used to hunt on a regular basis. They were also the first, we believe, to build shelters, meaning like digging out a cave area or erecting things using um, branches and things like that. And they were about the same height as us. So that's Homo heidelbergensis. Homo erectus. So this um, skull right here. And how do we know that they were the first ones to uh, walk upright? Because that's what erect means for this Homo erectus part. Is that they were first ones to walk completely upright. And now we're going to start to get more um, back in time. And we'll see that the skeletons uh, are going to be a little bit punched over and maybe walked on their hands part of the time. But Homo erectus was the first hominid to walk upright, we think. And we know that because of the placement of, remember, that um, the, uh, the foramen magnum underneath that big hole where the spine goes through. Let me take, show you this picture right here. Remember this. The placement of that foramen magnum 
tells where the spine is placed and that tells how they walked by placement of the spine. So this was skull F. This is Homo erectus right here on your skull, identification that you did yesterday, and about the same size brain as us. However, a little bit smaller, and we know that because take a look at the really sloped forehead on that guy. So some were a little bit more sloped than others. Huge brow ridge there. He's got really big eyebrows. So that's Homo erectus. They lived about um, 143,000 to 1.8 million years ago. They were the first humans to walk completely upright. They cared for their old and their weak. And how do we know that? Because they would they would place them like say on a stone tablet that was that that would show care. And how do we know that they were ancient, the people that they were caring for, or that they were ill? Well, we know that they were old because you can actually see identifying marks on the skulls and the skeletons that we find the remains of. And you can see, um, you can tell aging and how that's progressed in the skull. So we think that because they would place these older skeletons on, say, a stone slab, that means that they were either taking care of them or they had some place of honor or something like that. So we just use clues and we look for patterns when we're talking about fossils. So let's take a look at our next one. Homo ergaster is actually fairly similar to Homo, ha uh, Homo erectus. So you can put the same thing down for both of them. They lived about the same period of time. Um, the Homo erectus was probably just a little bit more upright than the Homo ergaster. And again, these are just artist depictions. This is not what they could have looked like 100%, but we're just guessing based on the evidence that we have. So again, a nice uh, size brain case there and probably walked mostly upright. Homo habilis. So we have a skull for that one. That is skull E. And where's my skull E? There he is. This is Homo habilis right here in our skull that you looked at. Dun, da, da, da. So Homo habilis lived 1.4 to 2.2 million years ago. And we call this one handyman. And we call him handyman because for a lot of these skulls and skeletons, we found them um, with tools that are by their remains. And so they use stone tools, they use um, some complicated tools, not really complex, obviously, but they would use stone tools that were sharpened or filed down so that we know that we use them, that we know that they use them for tools. First ones to use tools. All right, next one on our journey here. Now we get to the Australopithecines. Say that five times fast. Australopithecines, Australopithecines, Australopithecines. This is Australopithecus robustus. And you notice right away that they have a very different look, a very different skull look. Their faces are more flattened right in the front, and they've got their really sloped forehead. So Australopithecus robustus. Write this down. He lived about 1.2 to 2.0 million years ago, and they have a big sagittal crest. So remember, we looked at that in lab. That was on the back of the skulls that we saw, but it can go all the way up the top. And um, why do we think that we had this big crest? You can see it right here, because we think that they had really big sets of muscles in their jaws. So they must have used their jaws quite a bit to eat, um, to tear, to rip. So that would create um, a need for a larger set of muscles than what we have right here. If you put your hands on your jaw and move it up and down, you can feel your masseter. Um, that's your muscle that's right here, your zygomaticus, and they're not super thick. These um, hominids probably had muscles that went all the way up to the top of their head and they attached to that sagittal crest. So they looked probably quite a bit different than we do. Um, we found uh, about 120 of these individuals in a cave together, which is interesting. So what happened to them, we don't know. Were they sacrificed? Were they killed? Were there's a natural disaster? We're not quite sure. But that's just interesting when we find that many skeletons and skulls in one place at the same time. Very interesting. Australopithecus boisei is your next one to write down. So look at that sagittal cross on the top of the skull there. And again, really wide, big cheekbones, probably very muscular, very big muscle set right here, um, highly muscular um, area on the side of the head and also to the lower jaw, although we don't see the lower on this particular skeleton or skull right here. 
When did they live? About 1.2 to 2.3 million years ago. Um, they were the largest of the Australopithecines, and they were the first um, um, hominids to use super simple tools, like not the complicated arrows, bows, and things like that, like our handyman used, but more things like just a sharpened rock, and that's about it. But they did um, take the things that were around them and turn them into tools. All right, the next one we have on our March of Hominids here. I tell you everything? Um, Nutcracker Man, yes, because they have um, really big molars. So write that down also. Really big molar, huge wide molars that they might probably use to crack nuts. Australopithecus atheopicus. Look at that projection on the top of his skull. Oh my goodness. So that is the huge sagittal crest that we were talking about in lab. And this particular skull is a famous one. It's called the um, black skull due to the levels of manganese that were in the rocks surrounding it. So obviously the skull, the skeleton of this hominid was not black. It was not black. Um, but this, this particular skull was black because of um, elements that were in the rocks. Not many fossils found about 2.5 million years ago. So we're getting older and older, further and further away from modern time. Australopithecus garhi lived about 2.5 million years ago. Um, not well documented, as you can see, very a few fragments actually that were found. So it could be that they were just a little bit different than this previous um, species right here. But they have put the, the fragments that they found into a different category. Remember that prognathism that we measured, where it was the distance between the brow ridge and the front of the jaw? And the bigger the distance, the more the, lo the upper jaw stuck, stuck out. You can see that facial prognathism really evident here on this side view. About quite a bit. Australopithecus africanus. And we do have a skull for that one that is particular skull right here. This one had, remember the diastema that we talked about? It doesn't show the diastema in the skull on the screen, but it, this one, this skull does have a diastema on it, and that's the gap tooth in the front. Look at the tiny little brain case of that guy. Very small, probably not very intelligent, huge cheekbones. Like, look at that zygomatic arch. Oh my goodness, huge hole right there. Um, very, very ape-like, Australopithecus africanus. And we want to know about him. He lived about 2.1 to 3.3 million years ago. Had a rounder head than Australopithecus afarensis and a little bit bigger brain than the previous species. And we think that because of the skeletons that we found that it was a climber, um, but also would walk a little bit upright, but probably on its hands a little bit. Australopithecus afarensis, that's our friend Lucy. And that's our last skull that we have here. That is. Skull B. Whoop, there's Lucy. So Australopithecus afarensis is Lucy. And again, huge zygomatic arch. This one had the um, foramen magnum more toward the rear, probably used hands to walk. And the oldest um, Australopithecus, one of the oldest Australopithecines, 2.95 to 3.85 million years ago. We found lots of different individual skeletons, but Lucy is the most complete. So I think over 300 skeletons have been found of this particular species. And small brains, large arms on the skeletons. So when we stand up straight, our hands probably don't go much past our mid-thigh, whereas the Orthopistica afarensis, their hands would go almost all the way down to their knees. A little bit longer arm than us. Australopithecus anamensis, very, very ape-like. Check out the face on that one. Very prominent jaw. Uh, lived 3.9 to 4.2 million years ago and about the size of a chimpanzee, so much smaller than a typical hominid. Artipithecus ramidus. So you notice a new word here that's a new genus. We call this little um, skeleton Artie. That's the nickname for that one. And um, Artie is, he's just a, a, a small little chimp-like organism, very, very ape-like. Take a look at those teeth. Those do not look like human teeth whatsoever. So Artie lived quite a number of years ago, probably four and a half million years ago, um, had a large toe 
like apes do. See how this um, is on our, our thumb is separated from our other four digits. Well, on Artipithecus and the skeleton, the foot, the large toe is also separated. We don't have that, right? We do have a, a large toe, but it's kind of in line with the rest of our toes. And in Artipithecus, his large toe is sticking out to the side a little bit like that. Right, that's it, my friends. Hope you learned a little bit about hominids. It's, um, I don't know what time it is in the evening, but kind of late. But I want to make sure that you had this information so you could um, learn a little bit about the hominids that we found, the skeletons and skulls that we found. Hopefully, you'll be ready to go for a open note, quick quiz tomorrow. Have a great evening. Thanks for listening.